Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Friday. My name is Colby and we've got an important development from SpaceX and Starlink this morning to talk about. So I figured I'd make a video and go over the recent development. So I found an FCC filing from SpaceX and basically they're applying to experimentally test their direct-to-sell technology. Now if you're not aware what direct-to-sell is and how it relates to Starlink, uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about that technology, explaining kind of how an overview of how the system works, but then also diving deep into this new FCC filing, this request from Starlink for this experimental testing, what that means for the future deployment and rollout of their direct to sell service, and what it can potentially mean to you as a future user. So let's jump right in. So what is direct to sell technology and what is it not? Well, there's a lot of kind of confusion and misunderstanding regarding direct to sell technology. A lot of people just see headlines in the media and you know headlines like Starlink cell service, Starlink direct to sell, and they just assume that, you know, understandably, they just assume that Starlink's gonna be offering cell phone service. That's not really the case. So what what is direct to sell? Direct to sell is basically Starlink adding this technology to their satellites making them basically cell phone towers in space. Now this doesn't mean that Starlink's gonna be offering customers cell phone service directly. That's not how it's gonna work. What's gonna happen is Starlink is building this infrastructure and they're gonna be licensing access to existing mobile carriers. So for example, in the United States, Starlink has entered into a partnership with T-Mobile. T-Mobile is gonna be the first carrier in the United States to offer this direct to sell technology to their own customers. So you're not gonna be able to subscribe to this service or use the service directly from Starlink themselves. Instead, you're gonna to have to go through a mobile carrier like T-Mobile, who they've entered into a partnership with to be able to access these direct to sell features. So what exactly are those features? What is it? If you're in an area with absolutely no cell service, no cell phone signal whatsoever, what this direct to sell technology does is allow your existing LTE phone so no extra hardware needed, no, no special hardware dish or anything like that, just your existing cell phone, it allows it to get a signal from that direct to sell satellite that Starlink is operating. It's gonna be an LTE signal and it enables, at least in the beginning, just some very basic communication, like basic texting. And in the future, they're actually gonna be expanding it to more bandwidth so that you can use voice and data connectivity. But for now, in 2024 and the early development stages of it, it's just gonna be basic texting. Now, Starlink is intending this initially to be just a supplemental carrier service, a supplemental communication system. So you're not connecting to Starlink direct to sell all the time, only when you don't have cell phone coverage from your mobile carrier. So let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're backpacking in the wilderness, or maybe you're driving through an area with no cell phone service, Direct to sell will allow you to maintain connectivity, at least some basic level of connectivity, so that you can stay in touch with you know, emergency services, friends and family, et cetera. Now in the beginning, the bandwidth is gonna be pretty limited. There's not gonna be very much bandwidth and speed available from all the devices that are on the ground to these very limited number of direct to sell satellites that are operational right now. And what that means for you in simple terms is that there's just gonna be basic connectivity, like basic texting, you're not gonna be able to send a video or a photo or browse the web or get like Google Maps loaded up on your phone or anything like that initially. So the deployment schedule, according to the Starlink website, says that in this year, 2024, we will have texting services through T-Mobile. And then in 2025, they could potentially expand to voice and data services, and then later on, Internet of Things, IoT devices, potentially in the future. Now that timeline, you know, that's kind of a rough timeline. There's no exact dates given, and that can of course be delayed if they run into any issues deploying the system. And to touch a little bit more on how that direct cell system works, I'm gonna throw up a screenshot here from the Starlink website. And as you can see, Starlink is deploying these direct cell capable satellites. Your existing LTE phone will be able to communicate directly with those satellites. No extra hardware needed on your phone. From there, a signal from your cell phone to the satellite goes down to Starlink ground stations and then on to the car mobile carrier infrastructure network. So this is different 
a little bit different anyway from how a normal Starlink connection would work. So currently as a Starlink internet customer, your ground terminal, your user terminal, which is the Starlink dish, is communicating with the satellites. Signal goes down to a ground station on the ground and then connects into the internet grid via fiber. Well, that's a little bit different with direct cell technology because you're not connecting directly into the internet grid. Instead, you're going from the Starlink ground stations back to the mobile carrier network. So that's, that's an important distinction because basically what that means is Starlink's not selling you direct access to the internet through their direct cell. They're just offering customers through their mobile carrier access back to that mobile network, even though you don't have self-service in the area. So now that I've explained a little bit about direct to sell, what are, what are these tests about? What is this ex experimental um, request from Starlink? Well, SpaceX is requesting uh, temporary authority, special temporary authority from the FCC to test its direct to sell technology in different countries. So right now they've got an approval from the FCC to test here in the United States, and they've been doing that. They've successfully sent text messages They've sent uh, data, voice. They they run the whole gamut as far as the direct to sell technology with you know a very limited amount of devices, of course. But what this new FCC filing requests is permission to test in more countries like Australia, Canada, uh, Japan, and New Zealand. So in those countries, Starlink has actually found part mobile carrier partners to work with, and that's why they're requesting permission to test in those countries. So if the FCC approves this request, testing would begin on May 1st, 2024, and it would last 180 days. In the filing, Starlink also said that they would probably keep testing until commercial deployment of this direct-to-sell technology was available. So basically what that means is that Starlink has indicated that they hope within 180 days or so that they could actually have the system, the service up and running. So maybe they don't even need to test for that full 180 days. Maybe, you know, it launches in 100 days. It's also possible that they can just keep extending this FCC request, this FCC testing permit to be able to continue development. Maybe they don't actually get it launched in the next 180 days. Strong's done that in the past where they have to request extensions for their FCC approvals. But overall, this is exciting news, exciting development for anybody that's interested in the direct to sell technology. Just one more step that Starlink has shown that they're ready to now test globally, work with more markets, more countries, and more mobile carriers. Hopefully more carriers in the United States will jump on board once they see the benefits of this system. And that will allow further access, further availability to more of you guys in the United States and other markets around the world. So I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments below. What are your use cases for direct to sell? So personally, I am a backpacker. I go on sometimes month long trips out in the wilderness. And obviously there's no cell phone service for a majority of that. So direct to sell for me would mean maintaining at least emergency basic communications with emergency personnel, friends and family checking in, you know, hey, I made it to camp tonight kind of thing. Right now I use like a Garmin inReach for that with their Iridium satellite network. And that has basic texting functionality as well, but it's rather expensive. You have to buy the expensive device and then you have to pay extra for a subscription for that. And it's kind of cumbersome to use. Direct to sell would mean a lot easier in terms of basic communication when there's no cell service for me. So I'm pretty pumped for that. But I'd like to hear from you guys and see what kind of ideas and use cases that you have for direct to sell technology. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to us here on the YouTube channel. And then also check out our blog, starlinghardware.com. We'll see you in the next video.